diamond hands are cool on social media. They are not cool in real life. Like take your profits and just go be happy with your money. Like that's the point of it. The point isn't to just show the highest returns or like make the most money possible. It's literally just making money to fund whatever your ideal life looks like. And yep. Welcome back to The Crossroads, a weekly financial show for our generation. And for listeners, welcome back to The Long Game Podcast. This week, we are back to just me and Thomas on the episode. And we're going to be talking about kind of everything that happened with Luna and Tara and just kind of like things to keep in mind whenever you're investing, especially right now. I mean, markets are crazy across the board. And we're just going to hit on some of the things to kind of keep in mind to keep yourself safe. Um, But... I know you're you're still going through the CDAA right now, and you guys probably went super deep into this whenever it happened. Um, so if you wanted to kind of kick us off with just a quick little explainer on on the whole situation. Yeah, yeah and I think a good place to start here too as well is like, I, so many people ask me about Terra, Luna, like cryptos I'm allocating to. And I think what people don't really realize is that like our role and our time is not best spent like researching individual projects and where to be investing in the crypto space. Cause like well, what I've learned and I'm sure that this is what you're learning as well is that like most of the people that are coming to us either have crypto already and they need help on everything planning wise. So we spend time learning on planning and custody and estate planning and tax planning, all of those other things. And then the other people who are like, not really in crypto, but they kind of want to get involved. They really are just starting with Bitcoin and ETH anyways. So like I'm, we're learning about these together as we go, but like, to be honest, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're like the experts in understanding how all of these work. And to me, like I heard of Terra, I, I understood Luna, like, but to me, I never invested in any of this because it sounded too good to be true. So l- let's just start here with like really what it is. So basically like Luna was built on top of Terra's blockchain, right? And so um, basically the the thought here is it's a stable coin. So the goal is that you want to stabilize and it be equal to $1. Um, Well, why do stable coins exist? Why do they really matter? I think the goal for people is like, it's an on-ramp into the crypto system. So it's like a way to first get in. That's what stable coins do. But on top of it, it's just like for people in other countries who can't really get US dollars, This is a way to have something that is hopefully equal to the dollar. They can use it to transact. It's also cheaper. It's quicker. Like in theory, stable coins are a good idea, but there's also many different areas of stable coins. Yeah. And and when Terra came out, which I don't know if they were using UST, the stable coin, or if they were using Luna for um, what I'm about to talk about, but their big thing was like getting into e-commerce and like actually bringing utility to crypto. It's like they had come or I, I I guess I can't confirm if they had them or if they were just saying they did, but they supposedly had customers like in, in the middle East and India, like using Terra as the currency for Mm. their like, um, like transactions and everything. So initially it was like a new project, the, the founder, Do Juan, which, now a lot of people have opinions on him, but I mean, he was, he was out there kind of like Elon, like people just kind of believed in what he was saying. And it's kind of led us to where we are now with, um, I mean, a lot of people were invested in it. I've, I've seen other advisors talk about it. Like, Oh, I made this much on Luna, whatever. Oh, it's gone up 10 X. And as of about two weeks ago, that's, that's no longer the case. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, if you had $5 million, it was like worth a dollar the next day which is just crazy. So like really how Luna works is Luna is basically like on top of the Terra blockchain. And the goal is that like Luna can absorb the volatility from Terra. So basically what happens is if demand for Terra goes up, then more UST is created and Luna is burned. If the demand for UST goes down, then more Luna is created and UST is burned. So like those are, they're switched. So the goal is that like, one goes up, then the change happens and they try to stabilize. And then one goes down and then more is created and then they try to stabilize. And in theory, that like sounds pretty good. But I think people for the last year were talking of either like, this is great. And then there's other people who are saying like, well, look at this death spiral could happen. Like, is it likely? We don't know how likely it is to happen, but basically it could happen where 
people like the demand keeps going down and down and down and people just keep trading it back in because they're like worried that it's just going to keep destabilizing and go all the way down from the dollar. What happens it what happened a couple of weeks ago is that death spiral happened. It went all the way down to like 0. 0.0001 cents from a dollar. And not that like we're really talking about this for you guys to fully understand it because like honestly it's it's super confusing and there's like many different types of stable coins. But what I think we want to talk a little bit about is like what we learned from this. So for me personally, like I think what I learned from this and, and what I have been thinking this whole time is like a lot of things in the crypto space are too good to be true. And we argue and we defend the crypto space a lot, but we're also not like sitting here pretending that everything is good. And, and I definitely don't believe that everything is good. And so I think what I when I went in and I heard about this like a year ago, I was like, stable coins sound great. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like stable coins sound great. You can stake them. Like with Luna, you can get like 20% return for staking it. But then you take a step back and this idea was like, okay, a savings account pretty doing pretty good gives me half a percent. The average in the market, you know, real return, 8%. How are we getting 20% <laughs> by staking it risk-free? Like people were legitimately saying, this is risk-free. I saw TikTok videos of people who are buying a mortgage. Yeah, $10,000 a month mortgages and using the money that they had from get staking to live off of that mortgage. Um, so I think like kind of what we learned here is if it sounds too good to be true, one, it probably is. Two, it's easy to understand the upside and what's good. But before you go <laughs> into any investment, you also have to understand the risks. And for me, when I sat here, I just couldn't really find out what that risk was or the likelihood of that death spiral or collapse happening. And so for me, I, I really avoided it. Yeah. And it's because, I mean, we always preach the importance of like only invest in things that you understand. And for most people, like crypto is something that they don't understand. So most people probably shouldn't be investing in it just yet. And then, I mean, you because because you have to know like where in this situation, like where's the yield coming from? Like how are they actually paying out this 19.5%? And I mean, it's kind of similar to a Ponzi scheme, honestly. Like, and it's even almost worse than that because they really just created a fake currency and people are putting that fake currency in and getting more fake currency out. So like just the whole idea of it's kind of insane in itself. But like with the with the 19 and a half percent back in February, they um, so they had like a bunch of crypto in their reserves and stuff to be able to pay out this 19.5 percent. They were also taking some money from just new investors to help like build up the reserves and keep paying out that 19 percent. But back in February, their reserves were down to like just a couple weeks left. So they had to like re up the reserves, like just I don't know where that money came from either. They bought a, but, a bunch of Bitcoin, right? Yeah, they. so they, I can't remember what it all consisted of originally, but they were almost out, loaded up with more Bitcoin. And then even before the crash happened a couple of weeks ago, they were only down to like three weeks of money left in the reserves again, or they were going to have to start slashing the 19%. But with the 19%, like, really all they were doing is the exact same thing that uber did to get like cheaper rides at the beginning it's exactly how amazon took market share like they were literally just subsidizing the yield eating the cost to try and get users to then eventually like lower the yield and then it's kind of just a functioning ecosystem so like that was the whole idea and just didn't happen because of like how the whole thing was set up and then a lot of things played into it, but eventually there was just enough downward sell pressure on UST itself. And then all the uncertainty in, in just the world and every other market, like people were scared in general. So whenever they started selling because of that algorithm you were talking about, it just pushed it all the way to zero because that's kind of what it's designed to do. It's just not supposed to take that much sell pressure. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good summary. I think like coming out from this, there's a lot of people who think it's bad for crypto, but I think I have the opposite viewpoint. I mean, I think if you look back in the 2000s, obviously we weren't like very old, but we've studied it, we understand it. Like what happened with the internet is that there was good coming and a lot of bad people latch on to get rich quick schemes or like, how do I build and like take advantage of the momentum that's happening? 
And that's what's happening in the crypto space. Like people say it's easy to get rich. I mean, you start some really tiny projects, tons of people are going to invest at 0.00001 cents because like all it has to do is get to one penny and I'm like worth a hundred million dollars off my $10 <clears throat> I put in. And so there's just ton of these projects coming out. I think I was reading a story yesterday on Twitter of like a VC company. They had a proposal from somebody of like a new coin that they were going to offer. They ended up figuring out that they copyrighted everything from a different coin. And they were basically just trying to take funding to get money to pump their own coin to become rich and exit. And like, those are the things that we're starting to see happen. And so in my viewpoint, like bad things happening in the crypto space, like I'm not happy anybody lost money. Like I feel terrible for all those people. Um, but in general for the industry, like these things happening are going to lead to regulation quicker. Um, which I think is what everybody is hoping for. Like nobody wants no regulation. They don't want no rules. Like we want regulation. We want rules. We want this to be understood and like safer for consumers because like, I mean, stable coins should have to go through audits. Like they should have to verify, like people talk about. Which the um, Gemini dollar does like that's in, in the state of New York. Like they publish their, like, I think it's either monthly or quarterly audits from like a third party accounting firm. Like I've even, I've written about um, Gemini dollar and everything like of everything out there. That's like the one stable coin that I personally believe in still not investment advice yeah. whatsoever, but that's like like you were saying like we need some sort of regulation so we can keep playing the game like we can't okay. just exist out in this wild west forever and everyone's just fending for themselves yeah because like tether is the other one that like it's really popular but people are like really scheme about because they're like we don't know they say they have all these dollars and they say that it's stabilized right but there's no proof behind it and so it's like any company could come out and say that they have this or any coin could come out and say, but without audits and verification, like you really are running a huge risk because you're just going in without having any of the information besides here's our marketing materials about it. And then people who already bought in it, who want to pump it up because like, I mean, I guess if you think about crypto, that's kind of what all of them are is like, you know, Bitcoin, et cetera. Like not, not that that makes it bad, but like everybody who holds Bitcoin, the best thing they want for it is it to grow because that's the best thing for them. So then we're going to like spread the message and be really opinionated about it. And then we hope other people get in, which then will help us, which then will help them. And it's like, really it goes wide. And so I, I can see how people just say like, things are Ponzi schemes and there are Ponzi schemes in the crypto space for sure. I would say that there's honestly a lot of them, which is why we need regulation. I don't know if the SEC is the right place to do it because this is like a whole completely different thing. That's like not necessarily the most important part about it, but there has to be regulation. It has to be made safer. And I think all of these different things are going to help push us to get to there sooner. Yeah. And I think a good rule of thumb, which if you invest in Bitcoin, you're already breaking the rule of thumb. But like, if you don't, if the founders aren't docs like if they don't if their identities aren't out there like i would be somewhat skeptical of it which you still definitely have a right to be skeptical of bitcoin like no one knows who created it or where it came from but this like doquan guy he was in a stable coin project like four years ago uh i think it was called basis cash um it literally identical situation algorithmic stable coin death spiraled all the way to zero and I know that no one like researched him or whatever. I don't know if he changed his name, was using an alias at the other place, or if Doquan's an alias now, I have absolutely no clue, but he had already done it before. And I think if more people knew that, it would have never even got to as big as it was in the first place. And the fact that he calls like investors lunatics is wild to me. Like that just feels like an Elon sort of thing. He he's really destroyed himself recently i think like even before this there was like either love or hate him and what he's doing or like think he's crazy but like their response to this has just been terrible like if you're creating a project like this and you understand the risks like you think you would have the if worst case scenario here's protocol here's what we do but like he basically went silent and the binance ceo like i don't know if you saw his threads on twitter he was just ripping him a new one. He's like giving him suggestions of what you could do, like how we could solve this. And basically they went unresponsive and they didn't really do anything. And they're like, okay, we're dropping you guys now. Like we can't even like list you because we like, one, obviously your project was terrible, like based on result. And two, the, the way you handled it was even worse. So like, 
it makes us look bad by being a part of it at all. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, it's just crazy, like how far charisma took him. And it's like, also, again, how important it is to like understand what you're investing in. Like, you can't just listen to someone's facade and like what they're saying about what this could be or what could happen. Like, you still have to actually look at the core of it. And it's like, what's actually happening here? And that's not to say like people who invested in it didn't do research because I know several smart people who invested in it and did research. And there was a lot of good things happening with it. And that's also just investing like you're not going to be right every single time you're definitely going to lose money throughout the course of your life and I people who invested in Enron probably didn't think that there was a massive accounting scandal happening on or happening behind the scenes and it's just it's just an unfortunate situation there's only so much you can do about it but again like I mean like we've always said like especially when it comes to crypto, like only invest money that you can afford to lose. Like, we're not just saying that for fun or like to cover our own ass. Like we truly mean that. And this thing just went from like a hundred to zero in a day. So. Yeah. And I think the hard part about investing really is that like, there's nobody who's really lukewarm on what they're investing in or what they're not investing in. Like everybody's all for it or all against it. And I mean, if you look at, you know, you already talked about Enron, but if you talk about like, um, really any of it, like, even if you look at WeWork, if you look at Theranos, like great founders are people who can just like tell the best story of the vision of what this company can accomplish. And where a lot of it goes wrong and where a lot of us get lost is that like, you know, the optimist in me sees that future. Like, I believe that what they're trying to accomplish will be accomplished, but we also have to take a step back and realize like, just because that's what they're envisioning to create doesn't mean that it's going to actually be created. And so like there's these life-changing technologies and companies and solutions and everything. Just because that vision is there doesn't mean it's going to it's going to work, but also like understand that that's where you can make a lot of money too. Like betting on those visions before they're a reality is where people become really really wealthy, but mm-hmm. it's also where if you throw 100% of your net worth into it and they don't you're bankrupt in your thirties or forties because you went all in on something, which is why we preach that like you shouldn't have over, you know, 10 or 20%. Like that's still really high for most financial planners, like definitely not above that in one single investment. And if you do like, just understand that that is super risky and you could have wasted 20 years of income and backtracked all the way. And now you have to play catch up because of these bets that you've taken. Yeah. And I also, I think it also shows the importance of like defining your goals and like knowing your exit plan and just like understanding your investment first. Cause if you were like, if you put $10,000 in Luna last year and it 10 X this year, it's like, would you have sold it or would you have just kept writing with it? And if you don't know your goals before you go into the investment, then you're just probably going to keep writing with it. Like diamond hands are cool on social media. They are not cool in real life. Like take your profits and just go be happy with your money. Like that's the point of it. The point isn't to just show the highest returns or like make the most money possible. It's literally just making money to fund whatever your ideal life looks like. And if you would have just kept writing it up and didn't know your goals, then we see what kind of could have happened. But if you're like, I'm using this, not saying you should, but I'm going to use this for a down payment on an investment property. I already have my house. I want to just kind of expand my wealth a little bit. Then you could have seen it maybe hit 50,000. Okay. I'm taking this off, leaving some still in because I just want to see what happens, but you funded the gold that you invested for. And I think that goes for really any investments, not just crypto, but especially in something, if you're literally just kind of seeing what's going to happen, it's like, oh, this thing could go up 100x, at least define your goal and why you're doing that. So if it does happen, you can take your profits and go on and be happy with it. Yeah, I was um, listening, you know, like Salil, Salil Bloom or whatever, he's on mm-hmm. Twitter, like, love his podcast. I was listening to an episode just today. Uh, that was probably like a year old or something. And it was a guy who they said, I don't know his name, but he basically has like the Bloomberg of crypto. Like he has like two podcasts a week, like a newsletter every single day, like live shows, Twitter, everything. And he was talking about like his career journey and how like early on when he started this, like his money was being made trading. And like, that's how he all did it. And they talked about like early on, he 
put all of his bet into some pharmaceutical company because he heard about a drug that was going to be created, basically like went to zero, lost all of his money. And he was talking about how easy it is to make money in crypto and how you don't really need to trade. You can just invest and like make a ton of money, which like people just talk about it like it's way too easy because it really is not that easy. Um, but then he talked about how like, you know, I believe in sound investment behavior, like, you know, in 2020, like I believed in ETFs and, you know, that kind of stuff. But then I saw like, you know, all the money being pumped in the markets, thought this would be bad and crypto was a better space to go, which I was like, money's being pumped into the markets. Like, don't think that like liquidity isn't getting pumped into crypto too. Like, I mean, I don't know how we wouldn't believe that. But anyways, he basically said that like his, his net worth has appreciated to being like 80% crypto now. And I was like, wait, what? You're talking about like good investment behavior. Now you're saying that he's like, well, I thought I was going to tax loss harvest or like, you know, rebalance. And I just decided I never really wanted to. And I was just thinking about like, he was saying this like eight months to a year ago when things were going like really, really well. And I wonder how he's feeling now. Like those people that like, he, he had two different times where he basically lost all of his money trading, but in, in stocks. And now he probably lost 50 plus percent of his net worth. And he lives solely off of his investments too, because he doesn't really make income. He's just doing all that for fun and is a trader. And so it's like, okay, great. You have 5 million net worth, you know, 80% in crypto. Most of it's down 50 to 80%. Your net worth is, you know, 30% of what it was. Now you're living off of it. Like you just don't want to put yourself in those type of situations where like a lot of people on Twitter, they hate, they're like, Hey, you know, 5% allocation to Bitcoin. Great. But what happens when that's 15? What do you do? And those are the parameters and things that we need to set up. And it's hard because again, we all want to get rich quick scheme. Like things are going great. And now you never want to sell because things are going great, but things don't always go great. And there's always going to be these periods of time where they don't do great. And as much as I'm happy that like Bitcoin's where it's at, because like trading at 50% of your highs while Netflix and other companies are at 90% off, like that feels like Bitcoin's doing what it's supposed to do. And like, it is establishing itself, but still like the, you just have to have these parameters in place. Don't end up with too much in one single investment because you and I have seen it with other clients too, who don't necessarily take the advice of diversifying. And now where they're at, they're like, shoot, they're like, you know, really upset that maybe they didn't make that decision, but we got to learn from these decisions. And sometimes you have to learn from other people. So you don't have to go through that same thing and just wish you would have actually taken this advice that you knew was right, but emotions told you to ride the wave and hope it makes you super wealthy. Yeah. And I mean, like that whole kind of like thought process is really exactly what financial planning is like taking your money and aligning it with what you want to accomplish in life. And if more people just kind of went through that, even just like a simple thought process of why am I investing? What money could I use this for? Like they would just end up in a lot better spot. Like even that guy who had like, however much he had in crypto, like if he thought through, okay, if I sold off half of this, I could literally leave this in cash, live off of it for 10 years and be just fine and let whatever else happen in my portfolio. It doesn't matter because I'm already taken care of. And like just, just that kind of stuff can make a massive difference in whatever you're doing financially. 100%. Well, all right, man. I think that was definitely everything that we wanted to talk about. So thanks everybody for coming and listening. Hopefully like this made a lot of sense to you. And I hope like we are educating you on crypto, but also like being honest that like we, we believe in crypto and certain parts of it, but we're also not naive to a lot of the bad parts that also exist. Um, so anyways, we will see you guys all back next week.